Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hammer Podcast. Today is December 10th, 2020, and I'm speaking with Deja. Deja went to the Circle of Hope Girls Home from 2016 to 2018. And we also have a special guest with us. We have James Frazier. It's nice to see you, James. Nice little waterfall sound in the background. That's good. (laughs) All right. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, give the floor over to Deja. It's all yours. Hi, um, I'm Deja. I went to Circle of Hope from, like you said, I... Years um, 2016 to about 2018, so got out pretty recently. Um, I really wasn't like sent to boarding school because I was like in anything like crazy, like a gang or like going out to like parties or like getting drunk or anything like that. Um, but I, I was more so sent there because I just really wasn't trustworthy, and my mom just kind of feared that I was going to end up end up going to jail. Um, not really. I didn't at the time. I really didn't have a good relationship with my adoptive family. I'd, I'd come home from school every day, and we'd just be fighting about something, just like the just the stupidest stuff. And my mom would just like she was kind of like at her wits' end, so she decided that she was going to send me to a boarding school. Now, the thing about my family is that they're not Christians at all. They're not religious in any sort of way. But at the time, I was curious about religion, so my mom said that she was going to send me to a Christian boarding school so I can learn about religion. And, um, you know, just hopefully, like, you know, learn about God, because I was really curious about it. And I'd always been, like, promising myself that I'd go to church eventually, because I just had that curiosity in the back of my mind always. And um, the first boarding school I got sent to wasn't even Circle of Hope, actually. It was a boarding school in Florida, um, in Pensacola. I think it was, like, Faith Children's Home, or no, it was Marvelous Grace Girls Academy or something like that. Yes, Um, I've heard of that. Yes. I I went so i went there and um i went there and i get there and it's just like okay we're gonna take all away all your phones and like all your clothes and whatnot you can only wear you can only wear like skirts and dresses and like um i remember sitting in the lobby and like uh again i didn't know anything about the bible or anything like that but they had this portrait like this painting of the sacrifice of isaac i don't know if you ever like if you if you're familiar with that story at all yes. but it's like the where he isaac is about to sacrifice his child on the mountain Abraham. and i didn't know i didn't know about that story and i'm looking at the painting i'm just like mom they're crazy you can't leave me here <laughs> look at them they're just yeah, actually like, he, is that whole story out of got there but i forgot it but it's actually <laughs> abraham <laughs> sacrificing <laughs> isaac on the altar oh there yeah sorry that's sorry. all right that's okay that's all right my bad i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, but I, I, uh, but I, I, Isaac got the shit end of the stick, though, you know. So. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he just, oh Weird. my gosh! But that actually turned into one of my favorite stories. But I remember like telling my mom, "Mom, they're crazy. They have, they have a picture of this guy about to like stab his son." And I'm just like, "You can't leave me here, mom." <laughs> and she's like, Deja, you're going to stay in this boarding school, and you're going to come home whenever you come home. The thing I didn't like about the boarding school is, okay, so this boarding school, this boarding school was not abusive in any sort of way. They were very kind as far as i knew but like the way that the girls kind of talked it kind of sound like they're very brainwashed and it i i got a like kind of a uneasy feeling about them like the way that they talk and whatnot and just like from the moment my mom left me at that place i was just like yeah i'm running away i'm not staying here (laughs) (laughs) got those cult vibes real quick (laughs) started sounding culty and i just i would run away and like Literally, I, I would just run away. They'd like go for prayer or something like that, and everyone had their eyes closed. And <laughs> they'd open their eyes, and I'd be out the door. The door's hanging open. <laughs> but um, I didn't. I had like I didn't really hike, have a plan of like how I was gonna get home. I, I think my plan was like to hitchhike. And so what would happen is the sheriff would always be bringing me back to this place, and like it was the sh- same sheriff every time. So he was getting pretty ticked off seeing me every time he had to pick me up in his cop car. So um, my mom was getting very frustrated because the owners weren't able to handle me and they weren't able to, you know, keep me on the property. Um, So my mom was just like, okay, so these people are telling me about this boarding school in Missouri. And I hear this, uh, this Missouri boarding school, they're not going to let you run away. And it's going to be harder to run away there. And they're very strict. So if you don't behave here, I'm going to send you to that place. And of course, I just didn't listen to them um, and kept running away and kept trying to get home. And um, my mom came to pick me up 
I think like in the afternoon one day because I kept running away and like I, in my head I'm just like okay she's gonna take me home and, like I was really happy and whatnot and she tells me that we're not driving home we're driving to an airport I'm gonna take you to this boarding school in Missouri I'm just like I don't I don't want to go to another boarding school I want to go home I want to I'm gonna behave and all this other stuff and like she's she says no you're gonna go to this school in Missouri and so I ran out of the car I was like no I'm not going to a boarding school <laughs> We were at a stoplight, and I just like I jumped out of the car. I'm just like, okay, bye. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to school. And um, I ran. I remember running into this church, like of all places, because it was like the first building that I saw. And like I was like talking to the pastor, and of course the pastor's kind of freaked out because this runaway kid just like ran into his church like after the service. And like, um, I think what had happened was um, she had told me the boarding school was going to be like a two year thing. The other boarding school just wouldn't tell me when they were going to let me out. They're just like, oh, whenever you're ready. So I'm, they were just like, it could be 10 months. It could be like a week or two or something yeah. like that. And like, I, I was, I, I had gone to the boarding school thinking that I was only going to be there for like five months or like a month or two. Cause or, I, didn't know, I really didn't know how long the sentence was, but then they started saying like, oh, 10 months, 12 months. I'm like, mm -mm, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> more and more. Stay tuned, 25. And so I think I had called one of my friends and he was like a very close friend of mine and I called him. I used the pastor's phone to call him. I'm just I told him like in tears that hey, it's not gonna be five months, it's probably gonna be about two years, sounds like. So I'm sorry and I, I love you so much. He's like, I'm and he was just kinda like speechless and shocked and he just like started crying and he said that he loved me and like and that's all I remember because like the pastor had to take his phone back. And then my mom came and get me, but like, and all this other this big situation happened to the point where we missed our flight. So um and I'd like, I'd ended up in like a mental hospital that night. I don't want to go into details about why, but um, the doctor had told my mom that it's not good for her mental health if she was to be sent to this boarding school. She needs to be taken home. So my mom took me home, and I was there for like three days. So I was like, okay, I'm home now. I'm gonna behave. And I was, oh, I was a good kid. I was after that experience. I was, I was cleaning. I was yeah, doing yeah. all the stuff. <laughs> It was yes ma'am and no ma'am the whole nine yards and then um everything was good and i feel like personally i feel like like that experience kind of woke me up to that i needed to be a, to try harder to be a better kid and i was but then like it was like 12 o'clock in the morning and i just see my lights turn on like out of nowhere and these people are like standing in my doorway and i'm just like hello <laughs> who are you and i'm just and they're like um they were escorts to take me to um the circle folk boarding school and apparently um they were agape staff members but because they were hired to escort me um i guess the house orders knew like how to get escorts from agape to like help them bring kids to their boarding school so they're just like okay pack your stuff up you know the whole nine yards um i'm sure right. you guys have heard about this but um pack your stuff remember, up put it in the suitcase and they're just like, we can do this the hard way, the easy way, but we can guarantee you that we're stronger than you and whatnot. So, like, me, like, coming out of the house was, like, I think one of the most traumatic nights, like, ap apart from boarding school, because my mom kept this a secret from me. And um, I, I just, like, the feeling of betrayal of just, like, your mom just, like, secretly hiring these people to essentially kidnap you in the middle of the night. And like I was, I was begging her. I was like crying and whatnot. I was like, "Mom, please don't make me go. I'll be good and whatnot." And she said, "I'm sorry. I love you, but I just can't help you anymore." And um, they just put me in a car and started driving me 18 hours from Florida to Missouri. So, and I think all we, I had was like bathroom breaks in between. So like, they're the goal of the escort is essentially to keep the child in the car no matter what. And then I think. I slept in the car for about six hours, and then after that, I was like, I got to get out of here. I don't care if I go home. I'm just not going to boarding school. And then, um, so, the I think for about, like, six or seven hours, I was just fighting, trying to get out of the car. And, um, of course, they're trying to keep you in the car, so, like, the they, you know, were a lot stronger than me. And um, they ended up handcuffing me to the seat, Um I think one. I think what made me stop fighting was like near the end, like when we were getting close to the boarding school. Um, I tried to get out of the car, and he like was wrestling me back into the seat, and he accidentally jammed his elbow like really deep into my stomach, and then I just like puked all over myself, and then um, oh, it was nasty. 
Because he he done it with like such force, it just literally made me just like puke all over the place. And it could have also just been because of stress and whatnot. It literally just made me physically ill. So okay. um, and then we didn't stop or anything to like clean myself off because they didn't want to risk me running away. So that's how I showed up to Circle Folk, scrapes and bruises and vomit all over myself. It was great. <laughs> it was awesome. And wow. um, she says I got pay people too. I'm wondering if it's either Julio or Smith because they're like both. Uh, you know about Julio, I guess he's still there. And someone says he's has some connection to like a transport, like yeah, taking kids there and stuff. It, probably it was, it was. I forgot their names, but it was some man, and he had his wife with them. And honestly, like I think the the staff members that took me to the boarding school, they were a lot nicer than the people that took than the boarding school itself. Um, because right. they started off really nice. They're like, okay, we can do this hard way or easy way. You know, we can talk and like do all this other stuff, but you can't get out of the car. So I think I just honestly I just pushed them to the point where they they had to be like physical with me and whatnot. I was the um, same thing. I was handcuffed, and then when they were walking me, because I came all the way from California, so I had to fly and then drive. But they had me handcuffed, and they still walked me through the airport with a belt around my waist, like a like a dog or something, like leash. You know, and like the, the thing is, like that people are happen. seeing this, right? People don't. Yeah. Watch it. <laughs> I, I want to say I Loki. I remember just yeah, like daydreaming like is this even real but i remember like the transport guys even talk you know kind of down talking people around and we're like what's going on there you know like what is that and they're like oh you know you know just same speech like bad kid going away to boarding school like he's on drugs or he's you know they're whatever. like oh okay that's normal okay yeah, exactly. well, carry on <laughs> yeah, it's crazy i don't you know, know. Well, when, I remember- I, when, when i think of when i think of the transport you know it's, it's typical of many churches or christian organizations they always got this gigantic van was it a van or was it a car? It was a car. It was a car. Yeah, was, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They usually yeah, have yeah. the logo or a Jesus fish or something on there, you know. Yeah. Something and stupid. then they're like stuffing you <laughs> in the car like a bunch of FBI agents. <laughs> just like... Crazy, dude. Uh, you know, that, I guess parents pay like five to ten grand for, you know, plus all, you know, like plane tickets for everybody. And it, yeah, great. Man, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I got to the boarding school and like, I didn't know anything about the boarding school like at all. I just thought that it was just going to be like marvelous um, Grace Earls Academy, whatnot. So I got there and we're pulling up and they they have this. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the property before, but it's this big. So the dorm building is right in the center and around it is like a gravel driveway that wraps all around the property and then leads out into the road. And so we're pulling up there and I see like horses and like a lot of property and a lot of land and then like the first thing that was like a red flag for me was just like a sign that said smile you're on camera or something mm. like that i was like okay that's pretty that's pretty weird that's pretty bizarre and like this the people driving me there are just kind of like okay that's pretty bizarre or something like that um but I like, whatever because i was tired from fighting and like every time that i was try, i would try to get out of the handcuffs they'd push it down so it was cutting into my wrist and like so my wrists were all bloody and i just wanted to get out of these clothes because it, it was pretty nasty it was starting to smell bad so i get out of the car and like i the people escorting me there they were in contact with the householders um the entire time saying okay she's putting up a fight she's gonna be this this type of kid when you arrive um so just be on the lookout and so the householders are actually waiting for me outside the dorm building to like help me out of the car well not help me out of the car but like to meet me at the front door because they were kind of worried that i was going to run away if they weren't right there um so like my first impression of them is like oh they look nice <laughs> <laughs> looks, because, can, looks can be deceiving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they just, right. um, they didn't really look like they'd do any harm. Like, but like, I got in there and we started doing the intake, and um, I was just crying because I was just traumatized by the whole experience. You know, I just got yanked out of bed. I'm in this strange place. Uh, there's, I got scrapes and bruises all over me, and I don't know when I'm ever going to see my family again. And it, it was just that sort of situation. So I was in the office, and they were just asking me questions. And I was like, I was crying. I was like, I was so scared, and I didn't know anyone. And I didn't have my mom there, or my sisters, or my family. And um, just, he was, he kept asking me questions, and I wasn't answering him because I was like crying. And then eventually, he just like takes my head and like slams it into the table, and he just yells in my ear, like, Did it hurt? when they put the handcuffs on you. Cause that's what he was trying to ask me, but I wasn't answering him. 
I was like, what? yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it did. Why does it matter? I don't even know why he asked me that question, but like, I guess it was very important for him to know. <laughs> I guess. Sadistic weirdo. Yeah. What? Sad- sadist- Household you're talking about the whole time, right? But yeah. Yeah. Sadistic, um, sadistic weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really, power. really bizarre. Um, and then he was, I, I kept crying and he started saying, he was muttering stuff. He was saying stuff like, um, tears have no effect on me they make me smile or something like that just stupid stupid just instigating stuff i'm just like wow you guys you guys really like this huh and like i think i instantly knew like within the first 10 minutes of like meeting him that this was going to be hell for the next two years like this was like an abusive boarding school and i'd like inserted (laughs) myself into a very tough situation so like right off the bat it was just like no time like needing to figure it out but i was like yeah this is this is bad (laughs) this is not good and, like, I remember, like, there were red shirts there. There were two red shirts in the office. And, like, I watched them watch him slam me into the table. Like, wow, y'all just going to stand there and not do anything? It was, I was, it was stupid. It was so dumb. Don't make and then, um, too, huh? He asked me something, and I said yes. And so he took my arm, and he, like, wrenched it behind me. So it's, like, really, really excruciating pain. And he did that because I didn't say sir at the end of my yes. <laughs> it's just like, okay, man, all right. <laughs> but well, um, that warrants a restraint at Agape too. Saying you could say yeah, just no to something or forget ma'am or sir, and you'll get your ass beat. I mean, I mean, I for I mean, I figured it out like after like my first few days because they explained it to me. But like with me being there for five minutes, really, I'm gonna get punished for that. But I don't know. They had, they're stupid. Like oh, honestly, they, they don't so care. They, they don't care. As long, to break you as quick yeah, as possible. Yeah, as just long as as long as they get back. a chance, as long as they get a chance to break you or beat you up, that's 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 all they want. Yeah. Same thing. Um, my I get in there and they just try to scare the shit out of you. Like, don't look at anybody. Don't talk to anybody. Like, you're trying to understand like a million different rules that like you're already breaking and you don't even know mm-hmm. how. <laughs> but you're just fun. You know, like there's no way to win. They purposely set it up that way to where you just yeah. And so, um, start doing whatever they say. My experience there, like within like the first like three months of me being there, I got demoted all the way to a black shirt. I don't know if you know what that is, but um, black shirt. You don't know what a black shirt is? We didn't have them at Agape, but I'm no. sure it was like Brown Town or something. You're just yeah, it, that's essentially what it was. Black shirt was just like um, Brown Town. It was like the lowest rank, and essentially, if you're a black shirt, you were treated essentially less than a human. And you were just kind of treated more of a slave and like property and whatnot. You're getting crumbs at mealtime. You're getting yeah you know, on the wall. Standing well, it wasn't crumbs at mealtime for black shirts. There, they just feed us like really disgusting food. So like, um, it would be like rice without any seasonings in it. And he'd get his rice from like Man, the that's farmers not even market. A meal. That's not, yeah. So he get his rice from the farmer's market and it tasted like gasoline because it had no seasonings and it, it um <laughs> they'd always serve it to us cold because according to them since we we're black shirts we didn't deserve to have anything warm and they'd feed us like bologna bologna um just every meal um bulbs of onion i remember him so- serving us bulbs of onion just to eat so we just have and it's not like we can be like oh i'm not hungry no you're gonna eat it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And we just be sitting. I remember sitting here eating these onions like bulbs of apples, and they just taste disgusting. That's, and we yeah. go to church and we'd smell disgusting, like <laughs> oh, yeah. onions. And you get really bad breath. Hours sometimes too. But then he started getting. He started getting creative. Okay, so he um I don't know how he got a hold of this crap, but he started feeding us pigs now, like raw pigs now. I have no idea. I don't know how he got it, but he got it, and he made. He forced us to eat it, and that stuff does not taste good. Like. There's a reason it's not served out in restaurants. It's because you're not supposed to eat it. But yeah, raw pigs not. We'd be served stuff like that. And just like, just disgusting cold food. And if not that, and not something disgusting, just something completely cold, like oatmeal, like chunky, like fresh out of the fridge. And so it was hard to chew, chew. Like imagine like eating rice fresh out of the fridge, not really easy to eat. Oh, and then we were expected to eat it within like 20 minutes as well. And if we didn't have it done in 20 minutes, um, we'd have to be forced to eat more. Um, I've heard girls say that if they... Oh, sorry. Oh, that's my alarm. I'm so sorry. Please cut that's, that out. That's all right. That's okay. That's all right. It was kind, um, of, a, kind of a good song. So they're going, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyways, it, I was not there for like the time where he'd force girls to eat their own vomit. But... Um, I know that, like, when a girl vomited from, like, being forced to consume too much food, that was just kind of, like, let it, him letting them tap out. Because sometimes he'd eat, make them eat and eat and eat. And, like, as soon as they vomit, he's like, okay, she's done. 
Like that was just like the signal was like, okay, she's had enough. Like it was right. really yeah. just like disturbing things that went on there. Yeah. Um, I think with the alley when I got there, um, he'd always had like allegations upon allegations built up. So he would start doing things more discreetly. So I think there was this one time he had made this girl eat her vomit, but they had done it like back in the office, like where no one else could see. So he wouldn't get, um, you know, the law turned against him and whatnot. Um, and that's another thing that was terrible as Circle of Hope was like, because of all the allegations, they had like this really strict policies on us. So like, um, I'm trying to think of one. Like, we always had to have, like, three girls around us at all times, and, like, we weren't allowed to be alone with, like, one of the staff members, and the staff members weren't allowed to be alone with us, and, like, um, you know what, that might have just gone with, like, all of the facilities, honestly, but, like, I'm trying to think, but, like, it started getting to the point where, like, things were just getting ridiculous trying to live there because of all the allegations, and, like, I'm trying to think of an example. I'll, I'll I'll say if I think of one, but... Was it, was it at all, all female staff, or there were male staff, too? Um, when I was at Circle of Hope, there was like basically no staff. It was the householders and the householder had one son and his name was, um, his name was Julian and he was considered staff member there, but we'd have like one or two staff members come and go and like, they'd come in, they'd see like how screwed up this place w- would be. And like, they'd leave. Um, there's was- yeah. always good places real quick like the, co- the cool staff members never last long because they have a brain i guess yeah you know? because they know they it's get wrong out of, get yeah. out of dodge yeah. and then when the staff members would leave like the householders would come back and they'd think of some sort of excuse to explain away why they left or like oh she did this because her heart wasn't right with god yeah. and <laughs> she was, um but you know what was they crazy i don't know if you know this but one time um the clemensons came to be part of a staff uh, at circle of hope for like a few years, um, I think Ash. Uh, I think her name was. Uh, oh wait, uh, I don't know if I can say her name, but like a few of the Clemenson family came to be part of the staff, and she left too. Females, females. yeah, females. Yeah, um, it was it was a sister that had come to be a staff member, and it was like two brothers, and then one of the brothers just like dipped out, and then one of them tried to stay, but he decided to leave. Well, good for him. I, I know it probably wasn't that that idiot. What's his name? Arth, Arth What's his? Oh, Jareth. Jareth. Child. Yeah, Child. yeah. I'm sure he's probably thinking, "Oh, a buffet. Oh, I better oh, get out of here." Google Jareth Clemens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Google will show you that he's. Yeah, a he's a he's a he's a chomo. Right yeah. He's oh a, gosh. Yeah. That's 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 I think that's I think that's I think that's the reason why they you know these staff members they didn't allow him that they didn't allow him to be you know alone with. The girls, because of mm-hmm. dumbasses like that, who can't, uh, who are not thinking with their brains, basically. Mm-hmm. Have no business being near anyone's daughters. Yeah, that's yeah. Sure. Exactly. right. And I, I thought of an example now. There is, there would be this um, plumber or electrician that would come, and he was just like this guy that um, was just trying to take care of his family. So he'd come over and do like electric or plumbing or do some simple fixes in the dorm building, and um. Uh, Mr. Household oh. wouldn't let us um, be around him. Like he, um, the guy would all like always be trying to constantly avoid us. And we later found out it's because Householder told him, "Oh, if you hang around them, they're going to allegate against you, and they're going to say that you raped them or something like that." So it was just really disheartening, like trying to like like walking past someone and then being like scared out of their minds to be around you for something that you're obviously not going to do. And so it's just like that's another thing was. Th- the emotional abuse they just tell people like oh these are the bad girls and like don't stay around them whenever we'd go to church and go to like um you know what is it sunday school we'd go to sunday school and so they'd have us on this side of the classroom and they'd have everyone else on this side and i guess everyone on this side was told don't talk to them don't look at them don't communicate with them so we were just exiled we were just like nothing at all we were just invisible and um, you know, we're teenagers. We, we want to talk to people. We want to be social. Right. And um, we're just completely socially distant from everyone. Whenever we were in church, we weren't allowed to raise our hands or, like, say amen or anything like that. We were just told to be quiet. Um, whenever we were at church, we had to sit in the pews, um, look at your Bible. And if you looked anywhere else other than your Bible, you were going to be punished after church. And that was the one place you really didn't want to mess up um, or get in trouble was church because they took it so seriously. And if you did something wrong at church, they're like they're gonna be like, "Oh, Satan's using you to like 
stop us from going to church and whatnot. I was like, of course he is, because he has nothing better to do. <laughs> Don't mess oh. with chapel. Oh. I saw. I've never seen a couple kids just lose it during chapel and get dragged out, and you did not see him for a good, like four hours. You know, like it was an extra long restraint if you did something in church. Like, yeah. Dude, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, oh, they always got to pull that Satan card, you know. Yeah. Satan, yeah. Satan, this, Satan that. Did they, did they ever? Did they ever refer to the girls as sluts or whores or anything like that? Oh yeah, basically, <laughs> we'd get slut shamed. Even yeah. though we are all wearing ankles, like ankle length skirts. Oh, that's what I meant to. Ask. You guys ever go to church at Agape or no? Were they totally like separate by this point, not messing with each other church wise and all that? Did you guys ever go to church at Agape? We went. Yeah, we went to a church. We went to one church, and it was a Brian Baptist church, and it was a strict independent independent fundamental Baptist. Um, and Did you guys go to the Agape church services while you were at Circle of Hope. Ever? Oh, the Agape church services? Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Okay. No, back in the day, they would so. bring uh, wings of, or no, it's not wings, uh, circle of hope, but wings of faith used to be refuge of grace back then, and yeah, they would bring those girls into our church. Oh, okay, I understand. <laughs> I understood the sitting in church thing and like not being allowed to look at anyone because like that was the only time we got to see any girls close to our age besides like the three staff daughters, you know. So, yeah, yeah, they'd have uh, um, they'd have vacation Bible school and like all these events, and like the only people who would like really be allowed to go to those events were like the really really higher church, like the really trustworthy or like as i like to say the most brainwashed of the crew and you know they can the householders can trust them because you know you know they're under control um okay. those would be the only people that would be allowed to go because they didn't want us talking to guys so like for a okay. few years we wouldn't be able to talk to any guys or look at any guys except for their son and like <laughs> <laughs> like that's some gift shock <laughs> right <laughs> right and like yeah he he loved it honestly we'd be out on work crew and he'd come out for work crew and he just like act like he's just like the most amazing person in the world because he knows he's the only guy that would be able to ever talk to us and like for the next two years yeah he's gotta <laughs> he's gotta make he's gotta make sure he takes a look at all the girls you know put it up in the old spank bank you know yeah and there would be the um there were some cases where um girls came out and said that um, he ended up kissing them or like doing something inappropriate with them. There are a few like um, statements about that. I can't confirm or deny them because, like I said, every a lot of stuff was done in secret. A lot of stuff was done in the office and whatnot, like out of our visual sight. Um, but I, I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not going to take away their truth if they say it's happening. I, I don't have any reason not to believe them. You know, I know who they are and I know how sneaky they like to be. So they never tried that with you, did they? No. No, it would always be with, how do I say this, like, kindly, it would usually happen with the more developed girls, if you know what I mean, you know, like, closer to, like, womanhood, you know, and, like, um. How old were you when you got, like, 14, 15? I was, like, 15, 16, and, like, some of the girls were, like, that got, you know, stuff happened to them, they are like, 17, right. 18, yeah. and whatnot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I I was, can I be honest? I was kind of ugly back then. So, <laughs> were you a fighter though? Did you did you did you fight him? Were you one of those type of girls that was like hell no and like had to get restrained because you were swinging on people? Type no, of thing? I think yourself? that was the the only time. Okay, actually, I take that back. The I got restrained like one or two times there. The first time was like my first night there because I was like, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> okay, bye. Oh, oh, I, was yeah. the, I was in the we there was a room designated for the new girls and um. They'd have, you know, like a higher shirt, like the sec a second higher shirt because of the rank system. So it would be like a pink shirt supervisor and then a red, a red shirt and then the purple shirts were in a separate room, like closest to the exits. So that if the they had alarms in the hallway. So like when a girl would like walk out of the room, the alarm would go off and whoever's in the hallway is getting tackled. <laughs> They're getting tackled. They're going down. <laughs> um, so I had planned to like run away at like five o'clock in the morning when everyone was asleep. And so I'm coming out of my bed and like the staff, not the staff members, the supervisors, I guess she was a very light sleeper. And she's like, you need to get back in your bed like right now. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, I get to go to sleep. <laughs> and she's like, need no, I'm telling, she was actually kind of like warning me like, dude, you can't do this. You need to get back in bed right now. And I was like, no, no I'm, I'm out of here. So I was like putting on my jacket and whatnot, putting on my boots and like, I was like planning to walk out of the door and she just goes like at the top of the, her lungs, she just yells runner and like runner was just like the, oh, like yeah. the code word for like attack, I guess that's, that's roughly the translation. And so like everyone's like getting out of their beds and they're like, 
they just start like putting their arms around me and like like grabbing my legs and this and whatnot and i'm like freaking out like why are you touching me <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> and so like i think because of the adrenaline i was like i had the advantage because i was scared and like i just had like like the the drive to just get out as soon as possible so like there are six girls trying to take me down and i just wasn't going down i was like biting and kicking and like punching and swinging and whatnot. <laughs> I bit one of the girls. I don't know who I bit, but I bit someone. I'm <laughs> just like, no, get off of me. <laughs> and eventually they had me like pinned down to the ground. What they were trying to do is they were trying to restrain me, but I guess they hadn't been fully trained in it. So it was just, it felt like they were tickling me, honestly. <laughs> just like, what are you? Um, but like someone would have like their hand on my pressure point. I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? And I'm, um, they had me pinned to the ground until they can get brother householder over to us that's what we had to call him we had to call him brother householder um and so uh he gets over there um we're upstairs and they're explaining to him that i was trying to run away and whatnot and um one of them said that i had bit her and i did and um he goes so you like to bite huh i'm just like yeah and he just like took my head and he just like he like thrust me forward to the point where like i just face planted on the ground and then they like proceeded to restrain me like six girls and it, i remember being restrained and like being in like this excruciating pain because they're pushing on your pressure points and like i think the most dis i think the most disturbing part about the restraint wasn't the pain it was the fact that he was training them as they were restraining me so like okay you gotta hold her so she does she's not able to like throw you off and like you have to hold her like right here and like you're essentially training these girls how to torture their own peers and it was just very i didn't like it and then um oh, yeah. Stephanie strength is like not even at it's an ass beating like it's not you know there's proper ways that even in prison and then you know like cops and stuff are supposed to they don't always but are supposed mm -hmm. to you know what i mean like forcefully get a hold of people that are out of control they don't do that at these schools like no like yeah. said, they know and yeah you're getting your ass beat by in this case six girls that they don't need to dig their elbows into your pressure point like it's yeah training them and stuff like that's yeah well, almost like giving it much credit right like yeah but it, they are but they are girls so so they got to be pulling the hair right yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah i mean you guys probably had super, you guys no nobody had long nails i bet huh like you had short nails but i bet yeah they just get yeah but it was probably by everybody yeah and then i think the wife was there she was in the living room with us that's where their restraint was happening and she was just like i think i hated her the most honestly the wife because she was just like she was very uptight and she was very i don't want to say prideful but she was just like she kind of liked that she liked to act like she was the queen and like she was like sitting there with her legs crossed watching me with her like nose up at me and whatnot i'm just like really are you serious and like <laughs> the restraint lasted for like 15 minutes and then um it, this was like six in the morning when the restraint ended and everyone was awake by then because i was screaming so loudly so like brother householder told them to like sarcastically thank me as they passed me while i'm lying on the ground like my body just like <laughs> crumbled up on the ground so like as they passed me to go down to bible reading they were just like all sarcastically thanks thanked me i'm like thanks guys you guys are really great and um yeah so that was my first night i think the second time i got restrained i forgot what i was doing <laughs> that was all the first night. yeah that was my first night you went hey you came in hot <laughs> yeah i think after that um after that i just kind of like decided that i was gonna go on strike i wasn't back then i really wasn't like i wouldn't say like very stable like mentally because if i if i'm like in a situation where i feel like i'm trapped i'm gonna try to run if i can't run physically i try to run like inside so like there's a point in time where i was very suicidal at circle folk because uh, i realized that i can't escape this way so i'm just gonna escape like this way so um there is a time where i was like actively trying to kill myself at this place because i was just you know my parents like i didn't know if i was ever going to see them again i feel i felt like they disowned me honestly and i honestly i was just convinced i was never going to see them again and um i went on a strike for like about a week like saying i wasn't going to eat and i wasn't doing the out of rebe rebellion i was literally trying to just like end it all and whatnot and i think it was like uh a Sunday when I was doing this. So like Sundays, like I said, you don't want to pull no crap. And so I wasn't eating my food and I wasn't drinking anything. Um, and it had been like two days. And so, um, 
I think one of the higher shirts told Brother Householder that I wasn't drinking. And so he came and he told everyone to go upstairs. And my buddy looked at me like, oh, crap. You know, I'm going to go upstairs. Okay, bye. You have fun. <laughs> um, and so he essentially, like, took his bare hands and, like, pried my mouth open and, like, dumped water down my throat. Like, I'm, I'm like, choking and sputtering and whatnot. I honestly thought he was trying to he drop He got me. waterboarded, basically, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And, um, nice, man. And he, he, like, threw my head. He was like, there's your water for today. Now get your butt butt upstairs. He didn't say butt. He said something else. But <laughs> honestly, um, and I was walking over there, and he, um, I guess he, was, he still wasn't done with me or something like that. So he grabbed my head, and he, like, slammed it up against the wall, like, three times. And I forgot where he was yelling because I was so dizzy and disoriented from, like, him smashing my head against the wall. Probably, yeah. Jeez. But I just remember him, like, after that saying to get my butt upstairs. Um, and this this was, like, a different kind of scenario because usually the punishments that would happen happened in front of, like, other people. But everyone was upstairs, so I wouldn't have anyone to witness and say that they saw this happen to me. And so, yeah, I think that was, like, my first week of Circle Folk. And then after a while, I just started understanding that you, the way out was to play the system and to act like you're saved act like you're um this and that and like act like you're better and whatnot um and honestly i just didn't feel like fighting anymore and they just kind of drove it home like the less you fight the more privileges you get so agape i'm not sure like what kind of privileges you get i see the website and there's like i see like basketball hoops and like rec rooms we didn't have that the the biggest um privilege you could have there is i think getting extra food and that was about it we didn't have like swimming pools we weren't allowed to like play with the horses unless you were feeding with them. Um, just like really nothing. It was uh, it was hell. I never, um, I never rode a horse. I never went in the swimming pool. Um, they didn't have like the rec room and a lot of the stuff that they have now when I was there. But for yeah, like the most enjoyment we had was like a board game during free time. And even yeah, like if you weren't on good rank or high standing, you know, if you were on the wall or no talking, like you weren't moving. So I mean. There was guys that wouldn't go outside, like wouldn't get no exercise beside, you know, either like punishment PT or manual labor for like months at a time, like type mm -hmm. of thing. But yeah, same. I know they have it on they, the website. They what they play? <laughs> basically, yeah, like you're saying, you'll you'll eventually just be like, yeah, I guess, like I'm I'm tired of brown shirt and just plain Cheerios every day. Like I'll get mm -hmm. saved if that means like I can get some dessert for the first time in a year or whatever. Right. Like, every every yeah. time, every time I go, I gotta, when oh, I sorry. go to, when I go to that website. I'll go every once in a while just to see what's going on. After I, 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 I feel like I gotta have a shower after I'm done because <laughs> oh, I mean, the I, shirt, I, I close, I close it out and I gotta wipe the shit off the screen. I'm like, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, through, it, yeah, <laughs> it does. It's I mean, so. All, been there and you all, just the, know. all the stuff that's going on over there, and then you see this website oh, where you see kids, big old smiles on their faces, petting mm -hmm. the horses. Yeah, yeah, right. That mom that went and, go and yanked her son out the other day personally didn't take no for an answer. Have you seen I, the testimony from Agape as well? Because Agape Never. has like testimonies set up from the boys, and they're like, oh, yeah. "Oh, I'm so happy here," and I'm just like, "I used to be a bad kid, but I'm not anymore." And it's like, "God is so good." I'm just like, "Yeah." Okay. <laughs> Most of them, you can see the fear in their eyes because there's a staff. Yeah, member you can see, camera, you can see it in their yeah. face, like the how petrified these children are. Yeah. Like, you can even hear it in their voice when they're talking, and they're just like, please get me out of here. No, dude, yeah, no, as someone that spent time there, those things make me want to cry because I'm just like, dude, yeah, he's just, they probably are like, hey, you know, yeah, the most trusted guys will do this and like, we'll give you a soda or something. So they're like, sure. A, like, yeah, a, a person's it, face, a person's face tells, tells a lot about them. Yeah. You know, just take that one look at their face, and you pretty much can tell either this right. person is scared or, or, or angry or whatever, you know. It's all mm -hmm. it's all in the face, and, and they look so young now too, yeah. man. They do, I look like seventh graders and stuff. I swear, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, yeah. man, if it's yeah. And the guys, I mean, dude, we know so many of these guys by now, Jason. We've talked to guys that just got out, man, and it's yeah. more or less the same. So it just it breaks my heart, man. Yeah, it does. It's over there, kids. Hey, have... And shouts out to Colton Schrag, the big dog too. <laughs> working, yeah, working directly with some people that reached out to him and oh, yeah. saved. So we know, you know what I mean? Hey, remember even months ago when I did my first, I was like, one less kid there is a win, bro. Like, yep. I'll take it. I and mean, to, I'm still just and, like sprung badly. And, and to Colton Shrug, Boy, thanks, for, thanks for the plug for the Hammer Podcast, man. Big dog great. right there. Yeah, Shrug. you already know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Deja, um, when you when you first got there, I know we were already into the week. Um, 
when you saw the look on these girls' faces, I mean, did you see terror? Did you see, you know, lonely? Did you see anything that was that would give you a red flag as to oh, shit? You know. Hmm. Um. Honestly, my first day there was kind of a blur, but I know like the newer girls, they were just kind of like, "Dude, you got to get out of here." Like you can see it in their eyes, like, "Dude, yeah. you're here too. You got to get out of here right now." Did anybody say, "Welcome to hell"? But yeah, um, I think most of the girls there were just like either trying to play the system or just like very, very brainwashed. I know like with the interviews, I was talking about how the Agape boys had to do interviews. There was only one time that I know of where we had done like any sort of interview for like the good of Circle of Hope and only one person was allowed to interview. There was only one person and it was the higher ranking shirt and she was a purple shirt when I left and like she was like a red shirt at the beginning of my time there but um sh I think she was the most brainwashed one um they were actually trying to pass off the ministry to her um because um they didn't have okay circle folk was like ha maybe half the size of agape boarding school agape boarding school has like a ton a ton of staff circle folk had like no staff the only thing they had was like that one purple shirt that they trusted the most and she had to take care of like 30 girls and whatnot um but like it's I, I don't know if she was brainwashed or if like she was kind of she was acting like she was being submissive because she was scared or something like that because this whole situation happened a month ago where like she was I think she was like saying that um, that we were all lying at the beginning of like the movement with you know with like with Amanda Householder and whatnot on TikTok and like um, I think someone discovered like an encrypted message that was saying, um, please help me. He's making me say all this stuff. And like, what? you got to get me out of here or something, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But I heard essentially they had planned on passing off the ministry to her. So like they trained her, she was there for like maybe six or seven years. So that's oh, a lot of, goodness. that's a lot of conditioning. Good yeah, good. That's so much conditioning. So like maybe I, I just feel really bad for her, honestly. But she was like one of the worst people there. She was very mean, very spiteful, and like I just really hated being around her. I remember her walk; she would walk into the room. I just like get like chills and like, oh my gosh, is she gonna talk to me or like, what am I doing wrong now? And like, yeah. she was rewarded for being so she mean. Was there and, like, for so spiteful. long. Place produces, man. That's the thing too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'll tell your parents like you need to stay here longer to like get better, and it's like, dude, that right there. The people that mm -hmm. stay, you know, the longer you stay there, the more just depraved and just everything yeah and they tried to do that to me as well because of the fact that they didn't have a lot of staff and that they basically the way they would try to work they didn't they didn't tell us this but it's just something that you just kind of caught on to after um leaving the ranch um they kind of like moved towards like girls that were turning 18 and their parents showed signs that they were not coming back for their kid so yeah. like, okay, so you need us to survive. We're gonna drill into your head that once you leave this place, you're not gonna survive. You're gonna you're gonna go out on the streets. You're gonna die and all this other stuff. And um, they kind of like thrust that on me. And um, they, I think there's a point in time where they're literally sabotaging my family into just leaving me there. My family was kind of like on the on the kind of like teeter teetering off and on whether or not they wanted to bring me back. And they were just trying to make sure that they were just gonna leave me there. So I think. Um, this one time I had made an 80% on my test. So that's a B in normal public school. Well, um, it was like the final test on something like that. So an ACE curriculum, if you don't make a 90 or above, that's considered failing. So I had made like an 80% and they just went off on me. They were just like, they were so ticked off. Like, why are you playing all these games? Why are you acting like you're stupid and whatnot? And so they, um, they made me go upstairs and they made me pack all my stuff into like a plastic trash bag. And they'd make me haul it around everywhere I went, like this heavy, like 50 pound bag. I just had to haul it everywhere. And they said, we're going to make you practice to be homeless because that's where you're going to be if you keep making grades like this. I'm just like, it's an 80 percent. That's a B. <laughs> <laughs> that's passing. And so because of that situation, they'd called my mom. <laughs> uh oh, she froze. <laughs> it took, yeah, sure. there, there you go. There you go. And she, uh, I don't know what they said exactly, but I remember getting on the phone with my mom one day and she said, if you think that you can play these games and get away with it, you're not. I will leave your butt in Missouri. You can like sign into, uh, sign in as like a resident of Missouri and like you can be homeless for all I care. And honestly, I don't, 
Sometimes it's not even the it's not even the owner's fault. It's like honestly a parent's fault because I don't know what these people could have possibly said to my parents that made them decide to just abandon their own child. But that's like that's essentially what I got on the phone with her, like listening to her saying, "Okay, you're not coming home. I'm I'm just gonna leave you there, and like I'm done with you and whatnot." And, like I don't like at this point I had like basically I had done like all the motions. I'd like. I wasn't like getting into like actual trouble. I was stuck in the system and I was doing everything I could to get back to my home and just hearing that was just very disheartening and whatnot. And so like um they were actively trying to make like force me to stay there and be a staff after I turned 18 and then I think like after I failed my test or something he said something along the lines of, "You know what? I don't even care if you you're homeless or not. I don't want you as staff." I'm just like, "What are you talking about?" Like now I understand what he meant because he was trying to make me be staff there. And then um, right. after that, Thanks. it was just like in my head that I was going to be, they would just He's basically the say, you're not going yeah. home and you're going homeless. You should have just you told him. You the should. whole program. They don't have to like indoctrinate somebody that's like on the outside. Right. Already been for years. Mm -hmm. You've probably given in already. I mean, yeah, also, especially I personally feel like they probably will go harder after adopted kids that they feel like it's easier to alienate them from their family that they are, you know, probably already on shaky ground with. Mm -hmm. so exactly. And then they convince you like, yeah, walk out of here. Like you have nowhere to go. So you might as well. It's, and it is. Right. that's like the, what makes it institutional right there. Cause all these places do that. And that's how they right. pay. Some of these people pay. Yeah. Stay there. When I was there, blue shirts would get 200 bucks a month. And then just like some, yeah, they'd sleep in the same, bunk bed basement with us and like mm -hmm. eat at the you know eat the same shit like they didn't get shit like yeah and then the uh, and then parents are just like well if my if my child wanted to come home he wouldn't want to be a staff member it's like they're brainwashing them that's why <laughs> that's why he wants <laughs> to stay there like, yeah they're 17 or 18 and they're terrified of like do i really have to leave here and go sleep under a bridge which like some guys have done you know what i mean like for real but so, yeah um i, yeah. I understand well, yeah, some people that just come from nothing or don't have nothing to go back to, like, manage to get sucked into these places. I, I like that. Like a staff member, I feel terrible for them. But, they use yeah. fear. They use fear to control you. Right. They use fear and they use the Bible to control people. And I think that's why it made me easier to brainwash. Um, I was very brainwashed when I got out, by the way. Um, very, very brainwashed. And the reason I was so brainwashed is because, like I said, I was curious to learn about God. So when I got there, they're like, okay, the Bible says this, and it's okay for us to hit you, and it's okay for us to treat you this way. And like, like, they'd always use Bible verses to back up what they're doing. And me not really being able to understand KJV, because that's the only thing we'd be oh, able yeah. to read, the King James Version. I, I didn't understand it. And we'd have to rely on them to translate it to us in like modern tongue, like in a way that we can understand. And, you know, they were mistranslating. They were just pick, nitpicking, sure. like, what they wanted out of it. And because of that, I'd be like, okay, so this is God, and this is how I'm supposed to act, and, like, this is right. And, like, in my heart, I really, really wanted to be a Christian. I was like, if this was, this is what it takes to be a Christian, okay, I'm on board. And, like, okay, the Bible says you have to, if she doesn't do push-ups, you have to kick her. So, like, there's a time where I was, like, a, um, I was a supervisor and whatnot, and we'd always have to be giving girls push-ups or, like, punishing them in some sort of way and like, it would get worse like the higher ranks you went up and so me thinking okay if i'm a higher share it'll be easier it was worse as a higher share because then you're having to you're having to have the morals like put on you like um having this girl do 100 push-ups till she's yeah. like pinky and red and you're the one having to monitor them exactly a troubled kid yourself it's like why are you in charge of other kids yeah like I, I, why am i babysitting them like yeah. honestly i was a red shirt and i had to take care of like 30 girls and i was i was 17 it's i had just turned 17 i'm taking care of like 14 year olds 15 year olds yeah. like how am i supposed to focus on myself am i yeah. if i'm focusing on everyone else and like well we're telling you about like responsibility and like accountability and whatnot no i'm working here and you're not even paying me yeah. i was literally a staff member there with no pay <laughs> like, and the thing about and the thing about the King James version, I'll tell you right now, I grew up in a Baptist church, so that's their Bible. Okay, <laughs> that's their Bible, and they uh, they they give you their interpretation of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, they'll tell you all the good things about the Bible, how God is love, how God, you know, whatever. They don't tell you all the bad things about how a woman needs to be submissive to her husband, how a woman needs to be quiet in church. Of course, they never tell you about the Genesis version in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah where, where Lot gives up his daughters to a rape mob. They never tell you those stories. 
I don't get yeah. how it's the word of God, but all these guys have revised it so many times. And then yeah. you gotta like pick to his, I don't it's like who so who's very, is this King James word or is this God or is this Abraham? I lost track. It's of that. God's right. James, it's God's right in the third person and thine. Yeah. You're gonna hard. take it, you're gonna take it like that, and that's all you need to know. I was a Bible scholar while I was there. You have to be just like <laughs> yeah. a couple yeah. of things, like go out for soccer. Like, but yeah. but usually that's how it is. So give you <laughs> select go verses. Give you the they'll give you select verses that apply to you or to uh, the situation you're in, and that's it. If you read the whole Bible, I think it would turn everybody to an atheist. I want to get at least like an hour or two of forced Bible reading every day at Agape, like right. before breakfast, like yeah, like before after church, before bed. I eventually got to the point where I would open it to like the first five blank pages that were just before like the whatever no the forward. <laughs> And I would just, yeah, just to be like, dude, I don't care anymore. Especially once I turned 18 there, I was like, you can't restrain me. You can't whatever. Yeah, it was, it was, um, I personally don't like King James Version. Um, despite how everything went in the boarding school, I did end up becoming like a really dedicated Christian after boarding school and like learning outside independent, independent cult-like fundamental like stuff like that and like that i found true. out like religion isn't really that bad you just have to find a religion that isn't like cult-like and that isn't just like revolving around them and whatnot and so um yeah. i don't know it seems like it should have to be that hard right but it kind of seems like it is and they made it they made the bible so complicated they made it so hard but like it's like the literally the easiest well, thing they do that they they they, they you know they do that that way they can teach you their version of it. You know, if I don't, right. I don't understand this. Well, let me tell you what it really says. Everybody that's what else, they're doing. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All the other Bibles, that's Satan's Bible. You don't worry about the new new translation or whatever. Or Catholics. Oh, my goodness. Catholics are the whore of Babylon. Don't worry about them either. Oh, yeah. Oh, they, they say stuff like that all the time. They just really diss on all the other, like, um, denominations. And, like, honestly, I feel like all denominations should Everybody. be respected they, for what they were. They diss on their own, on the Baptists. The mm-hmm. Baptists, you know, the first Baptist church don't like the second Baptist church mm-hmm. or the independent fundamental Baptists. They're all different and they all have right. different, different teachings and different beliefs. It's, it's weird. It not, that's how you know that religion is man-made because yeah, nobody, right. nobody could agree on anything. I don't right. want to yeah, worship right. a man or any of that. Any yeah. I, think one of the most, <laughs> I think one of the most appalling things that happened to me, like, as a Christian was the time where we had to take different translations of the Bibles and we had to put it on a burn pile when we had to burn all of them. So you were just sitting and you had to do it. Like it wasn't like a different person doing it. You had to personally light like, the flame, that's that's put insane. the gas on it and light up the flames. And you're <laughs> literally burning the thing that you worship, the thing that like that's holy to you. And like, it, it was terrible. It was awful. What's this you Nazi know? Germany? Are they burning yeah. books now? <laughs> uh, yeah. Like any parent, like yeah, no parent. They didn't tell any parent they were doing that. I'm and sure. The thing is, like, what the fuck is that? Like, these Bibles were donated to us. These were like given to us out of charity, out of like the goodness of people's hearts. Like saying, okay, here's these Bibles for these girls to like learn and like. And they like um, did it in front of you guys, or like made you help burn them, right? Like, yeah, like we had weird. to. The burn pile was where most of our like trashed work had to go so we'd go on a work crew and we'd like haul tree limb haul a freaking tree <laughs> like and it, work crew was never just like anything like simple sometimes we pick reeds but other than that we were hauling tree limbs we were like hauling hay bales like construction work level stuff and it was yeah. it was honestly but anyways yeah we had to take the bibles to the burn pile we had to put it on the burn pile and we had to light it up in flames and we had to monitor to make sure the fire didn't go out into the grass and whatnot uh-huh. Now, I wanted to ask you something, uh, David. Image, man. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen some of the other podcasts that I have on the channel. Oh, yes, um, I have. But some of them were talking about, how can I put this, uh, their monthlies, I'll put it that way, how mm-hmm. none of them ever had it. Was was right. Agape, did they give you all the feminine products that, that were needed? yes um they did give us the feminine products but okay. it wasn't um it had to be like it had to be essentially it had to be a pad because they didn't want the other version because you might as well be having sex there honestly <laughs> it was it was really yeah, stupid like you were only allowed to have a certain limit and then you you had to ask permission to like have the pad no oh, yeah very so- Tons of hygienic neglect here and everything, like we've heard from. And it, everyone would know about it, and it was it was disgusting. <laughs> it was honestly the worst thing. 
Yeah. And then, like, you're not personally doing your laundry. Someone else has to do your laundry. Oh. And, like, everyone else is looking at your underwear and all this other stuff. It was, oh, oh, gosh. It was horrifying. <laughs> did, you guys have to put your, did you have to put your initials on every everything? Yes, we had to, put, we had to write <laughs> our written names on your underwear. I swear. Like, we were fine. There, like, people would still get underwear stolen and stuff. Even, like, at a shop. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why. Yeah, but, like, that's why we had to do that shit. Like, weird stuff would go on, man. Like, I'm well, telling honestly, you. Honestly. This, let me tell you how stressful this is. Oh, it's like, oh shit, skid marks. Go <laughs> <laughs> uh, feel some that some kid just got sent or something. Like, cross out his. Just <laughs> 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 sad. You know? that's, that's how it was, man. Yeah. 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 It's like, um, boarding school, 50K a year must be like, no, bro. This shit was the clink. This shit yeah. was the clink. Honestly, um,. But for me, I never had my monthly because this place was would put you under so much stress yes. and so much trauma that it essentially just stopped. And a lot, that's a lot of girls that, said that. Yeah, that is a lot of stress that you have to put a one woman under in order for something that's not nature to just stop because yeah. your body just does it involuntarily. And it's just like, oh, my freaking gosh, I'm dying. Like that was the most horrifying thing there. Just like nature just stopping itself because of what these people are doing to you. Um, and then. Honestly, some sometimes girls would just lie on each other and like um some of these girls they were just kind of mean. They were very mean. It wasn't just the staff members there that were nightmares. Some of the girls were nightmares. And we'd just like people would like turn against each other and whatnot. And like honestly, they'd snitch on anyone if it meant they can get extra food. They'd yeah. cuddle up to the householders if it meant they can get this privilege and whatnot. Um and honestly, all it took was just for one like a group of five or six girls to be like, I've had enough, I'm getting out of here. And they could just all run away. But the fact that you really couldn't trust anyone and you couldn't talk to anyone, it just made it impossible to do. Um, and they didn't, like I said, they didn't have any staff. So it was very possible for like, like for us to just rise up and like kick the doors down and just like start a rebellion. But I don't think anyone was like brave enough to like trust each other in that sort of way. Yeah, you couldn't, you, you didn't know who the trustworthy was well, or still- who the snitches were, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was just like, they're just these hicks that like are yeah cult IFB and they probably have guns too. Like, they, mm-hmm. yeah, I, and they they yeah they brag about their guns like yeah. them. I think they were just like threatening this girl that was trying to run away or something like that. Yeah, and they, were, they I guess they had names for their guns and they're just like okay Sid will definitely make you stop running away. I'm like oh boy all right yeah, cool. I like that gun, gun worship and Jesus go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah gun worship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then, oh, it's great. You know, parents pay all this money for us to go there. And then we get Salvation Army clothing, like stuff that was literally donated to us. They didn't buy us clothes. They didn't buy, like, anything for us um, oh, except maybe the food. And it was, like, Cisco food near the end, just, like, stuff that's frozen. Yeah, and that's really what you cheap. were saying, James. Yeah, the Cisco. Just filler, yeah, just tons of carbs and just empty calories. And we'd work so much. You're still always hungry a lot of the time. Yeah, you're just, like, burning it off. And it's just, like... Yeah. Oh, and it was like they had it. So it was like the same thing every night. So like on Mondays it was spaghetti, and like on Tuesdays it was this thing, on Wednesdays it was this, and um, just not like nothing different, no variety. And then we get donations from like people, um, just like kind, charitable donations. Like I think this woman, one woman, she like brought in like ice cream and like cherries and like stuff essentially to make ice cream sundaes for like thirty girls. So the householders kept the ice cream and they like made some oatmeal with the bananas and whatnot. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, that's so cool. It's like Jesus. Like of course they did, you know, like, from just everything I know. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know. And I think uh, one time, um around Christmas time we'd get a bunch of donations. So like people I feel like people like, okay, we're gonna give to a girl's home and we're gonna feel good about ourselves and whatnot. So they um they donated like these chocolate Santas to us. We never saw them. None of us ever saw them like ever again. Right. And like I feel like if these people like knew that the, um most of the stuff that they were going to be giving us would would just go straight to the householders, they probably wouldn't like have given it to us. And then sometimes they donate and like only the higher church were allowed to eat or like the privileged kids were allowed to eat it. So they donate to like the entire facility and only certain people were allowed to eat it. Um, <laughs> that sounds about right. Oh, That's yeah. how it works. I want to say I even remember getting packages sent to me with like different stuff in them at Agape. And they because I was like a certain rank or not trusted at that time, they would, you know, like let me have the socks, but give 
like some other shit that was in there to a kid. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I think that's so fucked up. Cause then, yeah, oh, like, yeah. it's so, it's, for that kid now. Like, fuck you. It's <laughs> like, wearing it's my liver, like shoes or basketball shorts that, you know, like I, I swear, I remember them. Yeah. Giving like a red shirt, my shit that like, yeah, fuck you, Frazier. Like, oh yeah. That happened. At uh, yeah. Crazy. Brian just hated me. So yeah. He's like, you don't deserve this yet. And yeah. So then, yeah. You, some other kid is strutting around with some shit that your parents sent for you. Like, you know, on top of yeah. that. Like, there was this girl attention. named this, there was this girl named Autumn, and her mom had sent her in like snacks because it was her birthday. It was her birthday coming up soon. Um, but she had been like put in a black shirt, like as we said, black shirts were essentially like lower human beings in, in a way, I guess. And so he made her sit there on her birthday, mind you, on her birthday, and hand out her snacks to everyone. I've heard that and, one. Yeah. And she was forced to say happy birthday to like everyone she ha handed the snacks out to. It's so cruel, man. I know. It's. Um, I'm trying to think of another, another example. What lesson is that teaching somebody to like make them a better, you know, better character or like more yeah. loving or empathetic or anything like a better Christian? Like, we're, but like, I, yeah, come on, man. This is yeah, why people was... get turned off from that stuff when they leave there because these people that are supposed to be these righteous Christian chosen men of God called to preach treat people like shit dude they abuse yeah. people monstrous and they look at like they get off on being fucking mean and cruel to people it's like yeah that's you know what i mean like yeah that's mm -hmm. straight up though like oh my gosh yeah it was terrible i'm trying to think of something else and then another thing that i really hated was um work crew the most um because you know we're always told that since we're children we we don't have any sort of rights we don't have like any rights to like speak or like any sort of thing like that um but yeah, go out and we'd 40. work like 30 year old construction workers. You're going to work me like a construction worker. That's like been 40 years in the industry, but I don't have the right to speak or like go off my own and whatnot. But like, like I said, it was like industrial sized task. It wasn't like something like a, a tw you'd see a 12 year old do. So like you'd see an eight year old and she'd be hauling this huge branch behind her, like a rope. Be oh. It was hardcore crap. You know, we would, have, we would have power lines come down somewhere on their property and whatever 10 15 however many boys we would carry mm -hmm. that shit i remember doing that shit for like a brown town workout or something one time there was mm -hmm. like a storm and yeah we straight i remember feeling like that dude that shit is probably like yeah like 500 that shit was so heavy but we did it yeah we had like yeah probably 20 and then on, like, be real yeah <laughs> and on top of this we're doing this in like ankle length skirts and like yeah. oh, with yeah. like I remember just seeing the stuff they would dress these girls in, dude. It, it looks like some like Amish shit almost. But, like, yeah. yeah. Like, like Amish mixed with like Salvation Army or something. No, yeah. literally, the Amish, we lived by the Amish, and the Amish yeah. literally looked more scandalous than us. <laughs> <laughs> they got like some black leotards on or something. You guys just got jean skirt to the ankles. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was very restricting, and I don't know how they expected us to get anything done. And then we'd work out there in the skirts and like, and like the turtlenecks and whatnot we'd come in we get slut shamed even though we haven't seen a guy in like two years and like it was great it was you would really um, talk to you guys like that you girls like that yeah um i remember i think i think it was the wife that would mainly slut shame us more i don't think um i don't think brother householder like really went into that realm more but like i think the wife was like a thousand times more emotionally abusive like she just say things like oh you're sluts and like yeah. what you're gonna do is like prostitute when you get out and whatnot and that's all you'll ever be good for and just like very discouraging and disheartening things and um another thing that would, they would do is like when someone they didn't like or disagreed with left they'd say something bad to like ruin their reputation so like i'm talking to some of the girls that got out of circle of hope and like of course i was part of the movement to like shut down circle folk so one of the girls told me oh they told they told us that your parents kicked you out of the house and that you're homeless and whatnot and i'm like oh did he really is that <laughs> so oh, right <laughs> i was like of course he did oh. yeah well, that's not true <laughs> and then um, oh, they do that same shit at agape too anyone who left the program before brian thought they had a good change of heart for jesus and whatever or he couldn't get them to stay as a staff member you know they were a fish he couldn't catch they'll still talk about you at church there and yeah say that something you're in jail or you died or you're a druggie or whatever <laughs> kind of like scare the other people that are still there too like yeah see, I, I don't i literally don't see i think the only point in doing that is to just like really brainwash them into thinking okay if you're ever against us you're automatically wrong that's essentially yeah. what they're instilling into their head you know, this, this, this way by the word of god which is uh, what i'm just interpreting from my king james bible then yeah this this and this is going to happen to you and mm -hmm. you're not shit too like by the way yeah um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of like other stuff that really just made me upset.
there but it was a lot of things like like i said the place was very stressful and like i was 17 and i had gray hairs growing on my head i'm not even like joking like i literally had a patch of like gray hair on my head and like you know the girls would call me an old lady or something like that and i'm just like it's kind of stressing me out <laughs> did you ever um, witness any sexual abuse no like i said most of the stuff that could have possibly led to uh, sexual abuse was like done in the office. They did everything like out of like visual side of us. So while you, while you were there, at least there was like always murmurs of that though, like between the girls and stuff. Um, like they, yes, they there would be least, like whispered, like yeah, you don't if you don't have a contract. There is one girl. Her name was uh, her name was Carly, and she was a redshirt, and she had worked back in the offices, and she yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't hear it. She had told she's, it. She's to a one, GM. I've, yeah, I've seen her. She she's, had told it to one of the staff members, a female staff member named Emmy, um, or Emily, and um, yeah. so we didn't hear about it until like after she was like gone and like vanished, and um, so essentially what happened is I guess. She got in trouble for something and she started, she was on the wall for a punishment and she just started crying and like she said something to Emily and Emily went and told or the householder and Miss Steph, you know, the people who she was saying sexually abused her, which yeah. is, you know, just like fire. Just she's like. She's come out and talk about it, by the way, and she's super brave. Uh, Carly, I've seen her right. on, on Pieces of Victory and TikTok and stuff, sharing her testimony. So it's essentially what happened after that happened. So we didn't hear anything that happened. We just right. heard like. The after so, right? um, so um so one day we come in like Carly's sitting at this table and like her head is down and whatnot and we're essentially told do not talk to her don't look at her if he, if she starts talking to you don't don't make eye contact and like avoid her essentially and it was because she tried to talk out about being sexually abused <laughs> right when she so, like, as soon as that happened she was just exiled like immediately and like we just couldn't look at her anymore and then the next day she was gone that's my perspective of it. We were just told don't talk to her and then just like Phew. and we don't know what happened like I up with her story and stuff that i've heard too yeah straight from her so yeah and so we didn't really know about it until like afterwards and of course when what we hear is coming out of the person that raped her supposedly so he's like oh yeah she lied and said that i raped her so she she's a liar and she's never gonna succeed and like all this other stuff and we're just like okay <laughs> <laughs> just like all right yeah um, i don't believe it no yeah if, if, oh, yeah. if someone if someone accuses somebody of rape and then all of a sudden they're gone mm -hmm. that obviously to any person I guess, all, yeah. means all they all have all something all to all hide mm -hmm. you know face it if if she's uh, if somebody's accusing you face it you know what mm -hmm. i mean even if it's in court or if it's in front of everybody face it if you're just going to mm -hmm. get get you know make them disappear obviously you're trying to hide something Right, right. No. Um, but I'm, I'm glad she, that she um, she did get to go home like immediately after that because they were just railing on her, especially the the wife. Like she she would just be standing on the wall. She had to be put on the wall because she spoke out. Like she was being punished and like verbally just abused like constantly. Like she'd just be standing on the wall minding her own business and like the wife would call her back and you just hear her screaming like you're a liar and you're just like all this other stuff and like my husband would never do that. You're such a slut and like why would he want to have sex with a slut and all this other stuff. And it, it was terrible. That's what people don't understand about these places too. Like people that have never been when they're just like, dude, no, like how did that go on? Where like people are just getting raped and molested and beaten and like no one does anything about it. And it's like, dude, we can't talk. We're just there with the only people there are these staff members. That's the only adult. And like, they, you know, like they don't let us tell our parents. Like they, yeah, we're just there with these freaks pretty much. And they can do whatever they want to us. It's off the chain. It's unhinged. It's, yeah. The wolf. No the wolf said there's like two adults and like a 19 year old or whatever as a staff member the wolf's in the hen house you know mm -hmm. yeah you can do. it's unreal and, and like there was one incident where um i think the had like had an allegation of sexually abusing this one girl again i i can't confirm it but um i know that there was this other girl her name was kayla and she came out and said that um she like had kissed her or something like that or like was hugging her and honestly i don't know if that was like or like forced upon her or if it was like it was consented to because like i said Jim was the only male there and he was the only male that was our age so i feel like some of the stuff it was like, like with and i think like it was like consented to but again i'm not going to take away their truths i'm just going based off of like my perspective of things right and right. another thing about Jim is Jim was like the only 
staff member there that we felt comfortable with because again he was our age and from what i understand he was abused as a child too so like everyone was getting abused by the householders even their son and so like he tried to like relate with us he's like hey are you okay like did my dad say this to you and whatnot or like he tried to make a smile and laugh so like was like the only ray of sunshine for us I was gonna say, you gotta have when you're yeah you gotta have some like little glimmer somewhere like i totally miss yeah and then, but some days and would you know he'd be having a rough day with his dad or his dad would do something i don't know it wasn't done in our eyes but like he sometimes like let it slip that hey my dad he threw me across the car the other day and whatnot and the way he'd say is just like he'd say it very casually but like now looking back at it i think he was like crying for help i'm like what could we do about it we were stuck there too and like right. um and like when he'd have bad days like that he'd kind of like abuse his power and like start picking on us and whatnot and pointing out our flaws it wasn't perfect but um I think he was the only staff member I think I was comfortable with, you know? Yeah. Pretty common in Agape, too. Sometimes, like James and I were talking about, sometimes how your day gonna, is going to go is just not even based off your own behavior or how well you're doing in school or, you know, your attitude. It's just how pissed, like, what side of the bed the staff member woke up on that day. And mm -hmm. sometimes they just come in hot like that and just from the get go, yeah. Like, that's how mm -hmm. it was, man. That's why it's, yeah. It depends, it, it depends on their mood basically exactly yeah. yeah a lot of this shit was just emotional half the punishments half the time were just emotionally driven little ego little chest puffing whatever type of shit right, right. And honestly i think i went through the same sort of thing like honestly i'd get chewed out by brother householder for doing just the smallest thing and um i'd come back and this girl's not doing her push-ups and i just get so frustrated and like some of the times like these girls deserve to be punished but not like at that not at that like with that much force they don't deserve to be abused they deserve to be like corrected but like not at, not in the way that they did it because sometimes i'd be giving a girl push-ups and um she wouldn't do them or she'd be throwing an attitude with me and um i'd have to call i'd had to like call for her brother house to like finish up the punishment i guess and like he just kind of like go out of control this one time this girl wouldn't do her push-ups her name was macy and um she just wasn't doing them and so he got like this rod or a staff and he told her to start running in place and like if she slowed down he was going to slam the rod down on her toes to make her to make her go faster and there was this one girl her name was brianna and um she we were supposed to be giving the girls workouts i was a red shirt at the time and she was giving me a ton of attitude and she just refused to do her push-ups and so i called for brother householder and um he told her to start doing this thing called um not leg lifts, but flutters. I don't know if you know what flutters are, but it's where you have to like keep your legs like six inches above the ground, and it's like really like it shows your abs real hard, and like you're yeah. And then we're expected to like these out of shape girls are expected to like have their feet up for like two minutes straight. Like usually, let's like, flutters are done for like forty five seconds, but like two That's minutes hard, straight. Yeah. So he Basically. brought Brianna down to his office, and he said, "Get in flutter position," and he put his hard like hard shoed boot over her face and he said if you drop your feet i'm dropping mine on your face and it it was just like it was horrifying it's to watch yeah. it's just yeah. straight up abuse. right um no parent yeah, that's just, just like pay for that yeah exactly. and the worst part is like yeah, after a while shut down. Hey, i guess can we though since i mean yeah the whole thing has been about circle of hope a little quick moment of fucking whatever recognition that they are shut down and there's not girls there that this is happening to anymore. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm very and glad. Amen, brother. Hey, yeah, man, brother as I say out there. yeah, big yeah. big shout out to Amanda not Householder. To do that, but yeah, a big yeah. a big shout out to Amanda Householder for for you already with that, know. With that you already know. A protest that she I'm did. I'm mm -hmm. glad there's yeah. not girls there anymore, man. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, the first article broke when they went and yanked them in investigation, and I was like, "There's no I'm way they're so gonna happy." happy. I was. Oh, no wait, they're gonna take them back. No, straight up. Are you yeah, still in so. touch? Are you still in touch with some of the girls, Deja? Yes, I'm in touch with a good majority of the girls. I'm, good. Um, good. I'm finally getting back in contact with the group that I was with. You know, when I was in the boarding school, because they were still there when I was when I left. But I talked to one of them yesterday. I was like, "Tell me all about it," because I I want to. I want to know all the details of when they yanked them. I want to, like, I just, like, picture in my head, like, the householders coming out and seeing all these cop cars and, like, social workers and, like, oh, my gosh, that just gives me goosebumps. And, like, she said that, yeah, they yanked them out, like, 12 o'clock in the morning and they put them in vans. They took them away. But, like, oh, my gosh, wow. that sounds, like, that's them, so amazing. Is, is this real? 
<laughs> is, is there a is there a uh, a Love Facebook it. page? I know it's probably private, but for for the Circle of Hope survivors. I'm sorry, you cut out. What did you say? Uh, is there a Facebook page for the Circle of Hope survivors? Um, for the Circle of Hope survivors, yes, I have okay. a page called the Great Reform, and I encourage people to come on there, like yeah. to share their testimonies and whatnot. We'll we'll put that on the the description that way. People can get to it. Is it a private group or is it a public group or? It's a, it's a public group. Public um, group. Okay. Yeah. Just send me the details, uh, the the link right. link and everything, and I'll put it in the description below. <laughs> so, yeah. so people. But I can think go there. currently it's at like six hundred something followers. But um, nice. I get people that come to me, um, and they think I think the reason it has a lot of followers. Can I be honest? Is because they think that the page is started by Amanda. Um, and they, you know, people like text me and right. like, they're like, oh, is this Amanda? Like, can you get me in contact with Amanda and whatnot? Um, but other than that, yeah, I encourage people to just tell, tell their testimonies. Um, it didn't used to be called the Great Reform. It used to be called Stop Circle of Hope. It was, and it was just like um, a platform that I was using to like spread to the media, like some of the things that were happening at the boarding school, but of course it shut down. So I changed it to the Great Reform and I plan to like, just like, you know, target like other boarding schools that are abusive, you know? Right. And yeah, it's, that's... and it's very sad because like, this is stuff that you literally see in a movie and like brainwashing and like cults and stuff like that. And honestly, I thought that stuff was just only in movies until I went through it. And like people have, really oh, need right. to wake up to this fact that like Sorry. kids are being hurt daily. Like even right now there could be a kid like getting a cold shower or like being kicked. Oh, or yeah. Something like that. Oh yeah. And then like, what the climate is like at Agape after a kid, a mom just kid came and yanked her kid. You know, I wonder if they're tightening things up now. Yeah, or the more we speak out, the more that we speak out, the more tighter they're probably getting on these children. Because I know when I was at Circle Folk, it would just get really tight and tight every time a girl would like speak out or something like that. Yeah, going to lose something else. So just yeah, exactly. It would get yeah. tighter to where you speak out. But no letters, no phone call, fucking whatever. They'll tell the parents the phone lines are down, and then just no one's talking to mom for a month or whatever. Just mm -hmm. all just a little weird, creepy game for them. Man. Just I to, actually, I actually called Agape one time. I don't know what I was thinking, but honestly, <laughs> I, it's just like I, no. When I was a former, I mean, as a former student, my first few years out, like when I was military and shit, just you know, like late teens, early twenties, just wild boy. Like I remember, I called him a few times just to like kind of crank anchors on. Like old staff members, you know, I told them I was like a Muslim now and shit like that. Just to, like, you know, they, they would always, yeah, like, you know, come down. Good <laughs> one, like Jay. That. Good one. Yeah. So, so Deja, how's your how's your life doing now since uh, you got out of there? Oh, it's pretty good. Um, after after I got out, I actually went back to my family. Thankfully, um, nice. they pulled me out because they heard about the allegations of rape, um, and sexual hey. abuse. And so they pulled me out and um, for the first few months, I was like, I was very brainwashed, like I said. And then like, I think I started like understanding once I started getting treated like a human being again and like being treated like more than just like an animal. Like I, I started like piecing things together and then like I came out and told her, okay, so this is what happened. I basically been a, being abused for like two years. Uh, I don't think she really handled this, the situation very well. She kind of like, even to this day, I think she's just trying to, like, block it out of her head that she essentially doomed her child to a boarding school. And um, that part. just very, like, reluctant to, like, accept it, I guess. Or she just doesn't want to talk about it. And my sisters were just very distraught yeah. about it. Um, I think they're a little bit more supportive. Um, then after that, I immediately got sent to a another school. It was a, it was a uh, trade. Oh, school. my God. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 y'all. This was a trade school. This okay. wasn't a, this was a boarding school. It was vocational, and I just went. All right. <laughs> I went there to learn culinary arts. <laughs> um, okay. And I trained there for about like ten months, and I got my culinary arts certificate, um, CPR, just like everything that I needed to survive in life. Um, More useful so, shit. Got it. Circle of hope, right? Yeah, yeah. I got it. like even like now I'm like twenty years old, and I struggle. With like simple things like because i literally don't know how to be an adult because you grew up and like 
in those boarding schools, time is just frozen. It's, I was gonna say it's purgatory. Like you just, yeah. just feel yeah. like you're not progressing. Yeah. And I and I get out of there, and I honestly, I sometimes I still feel like I was 15. Like when I got set there, like mentally, I still feel like I'm 15. Oh, and yeah. like I think the other day, I like, should teach myself so much, just like normal shit off like yeah, you over the years. My- you know, <laughs> mom and dad never taught me, and then it was just the gape and other shit. And just, yeah, yeah. Right. I literally was at home for like eight months after, like, just turning eighteen, and then like I was in a job course, and like they're not teaching me anything because they assume, okay, your parents must have told you how to do this and whatnot. So we're just no, going. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> so like the other day, like this is literally how ridiculous it, ridiculous it is. So like I've never had a vehicle before. I've never like um, except for like a scooter. And uh, I got a scooter like this year. Um, right. and I had to teach myself how to ride on the roads, and like I had to teach myself traffic signals and whatnot. And um, I think it was cold one morning, and it started bogging. So essentially, I'd turn it on and I'd try to like accelerate, and it just shut off. And so I I sent it to like a scooter repair shop, and um, I called them a few days later, and there's like um, there's nothing wrong with your bike. And I was just like, yeah, there it is. It's bogging. And, and they're like, was it cold outside? I was like, yeah. And like, did you let it run for 15 minutes so it can warm up? I was like, no. Trust me, so many of us have had those kind of moments, similar moments to just, yeah, yeah. when you get out and then it even, like, damn, dude, yeah, this was something I should have been learning when I was like 15, 16, not how to move up and give push-ups to 12 year olds and yeah. get it, <laughs> it feels like know how to do is yeah. corporal punishment exactly, yeah. looking at the no. exams <laughs> yeah. now you said cul- never- you, you said you went to oh. culinary school yes it was a it was a job corpse and like you go there and you pick whatever trade you want to do so you can learn to be uh, an electrician you can learn how to be a carpenter wow. you can learn how to do this and of course yeah. I pick culinary arts because I like to cook. Right. And I got my certificates there. You know, James, I can already see it now. She's sitting there with the knife and she goes, you'd be amazed what I can do. I can make a really, really kicking hog nose. You watch. I'm going to cook this up really good for you. <laughs> Butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh or my pig gosh. snout. Pig snout, whatever you called it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. And then after that, um, uh, I don't think – after that, my par- um, the the program was kind of stupid because I think job works were supposed to like at the end of your term they were supposed to help you like with an apartment or like find like living on your own. But they're just like, yeah, we don't do that. We just send you back to your family. And my mom was just like, she's not coming back home. And they're just like, what? And she's like, no, she cannot come back home. And so I was just kind of like stranded in sort of a way because I. I didn't know I was going to drop work and just wasn't coming back home. I thought I was coming home and like my mom was going to help me get an apartment and whatnot. But she's like, no, she can't come back, live, come back here and live. And so um, job corps was just kind of like confused on what to do. But luck- lucky for me at the time, I had uh, a boyfriend who was um, very Christian, devout Christian like me. And he's just like, OK, I'm going to take you back to Gainesville and I'm going to have you live with live with my family until you can find an apartment. So I did that for about five or six months and um it was very it was very nice of them to like open up their home to me and um yeah. um i got a job while living there and um i think at one time um my boyfriend had a cousin and her cousin uh, his cousin was looking for a place to stay so the cousin invited me to stay with her and like split rent and whatnot and so like that's kind of my situation right now it's just um mm-hmm. um me and the cousin and like the cousin's uh co-worker um living together so um we just moved into a luxury apartment i have two jobs um working on getting my driver's license soon because i i wasn't taught how to drive at all like ever um it's right. it's, not, but, it's not like it's not a luxurious life like a very successful story but it's it's getting somewhere i'll have progress hey, hey don't say that yeah you, made you, made- it of- you survived that place you didn't let him yeah what I mean, get yeah, get you all the way, whatever you want to say. Like, nah, you you're doing just fine, Dave. Yep, you got out, you're alive. That's that's a success story, right yeah. there. Right. I know. <laughs> so, but hey, with that culinary arts thing, you know, you need to work on that. I mean, oh yeah, that made my ears perk up. Oh yeah, okay. I was just over here. That's, oh yeah. You know, to I tell like you it. to tell you something, there's a guy here where I'm at in Wisconsin. Uh, he's from Jamaica, mm-hmm. and he opened up this little. It was. Uh, he called it Little Jamaica, is what it's called. Mm-hmm. It was a little food truck, basically. 
And that's what he had to start off with. He started off with a little food yeah, truck, and cool. he went over. Huge he went. He went to bars and he went to little shopping centers and put this there. Yeah. Now he's got three food trucks and he's got oh, a wow. bar and grill. I mean, the guy basically just yeah, he sprouted out in no, within a, less than a year. I mean, the guy's yeah, doing no, great. Dude, I was gonna say yeah, you should. I can tell. Yeah, you should. Do yeah. That. Should yeah, food, definitely. Food, food caravan. Something to think about because you know where I work at too. They'll have food trucks come over there, and people will buy the stuff off wow. of them too. Yeah, it's it's a big thing. Food trucks. Yeah, that's like the biggest thing out in my little rural town out here in Cali now, like Central Valley Foothills, is like taco trucks and stuff. Like oh yeah. yeah, they will always see a taco truck every like five miles out here, like always. And if you make something good and they it's, like it, they're going to keep coming. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, definitely. Oh, have definitely. One spec- exactly, and they know. Hell yeah. Yeah. All right, that's so good. I'm going to go ahead and end the podcast. Uh, you guys stay on for a few seconds. Um, sure. Th- thank you, uh, Deja, for being on. I appreciate it telling your story. And uh, James, man, thank you, man. Yeah, no, I mean, the pleasure is all mine at your service. Yes. Two spoils. Yes. I want to. I want to. Yeah. Before we, before I go, I want to thank James for getting some uh, some of these uh, guys on. Yeah, and uh, of course, James Griffey too. Oh, yeah. When he watches this, he's been sending some uh, Guppy Boys my way as well. Brother Jay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, you know, Thanks. you can find him on, uh, I think you can find him on Facebook. If you want to follow the the Hammer Podcast on Facebook as well, that'd be good. Uh, yes, sir. Subscribe to the channel. Um, the channel is is growing exponentially. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. I mean, every time I see the numbers, the numbers just keep going up and up and up. Oh, yes. If you don't believe me or Deja, go watch the like 30 other videos that are out there from other people that have been Definitely. 20 years apart. Oh, yeah. Same- Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, or whatever, whatever, yep. Yeah. Like I said, for the people who Nobody are just, lying. for the people, for the people who are just watching, yes, please go and subscribe to the channel. If you want to be on the podcast, uh, you can either talk to James or J, uh, or uh, J. Tap in. Wait, yeah, James or J. You guys got the same James first name. Jay yeah. Frazier, we'll just call you, we'll call you J. Yeah, James Griffey or J. Frazier, or just uh, text the number. It's on top of the uh, YouTube channel. And uh, get a hold of me, and we'll try and schedule you in. So I think next week is it's going to be full, I believe. So I got a, oh, wow. had a bunch of guys calling me up. Yep, tell me want to be on. So, sure. all right. So yeah, for the Hammer Podcast, I'm Jason. You take care of yourself, and you take care of each other. <laughs> all right. <laughs>